All right, good evening, everybody. It is 5.55. I thought I had the second part of this video loaded up, but obviously it, it didn't record. It said it couldn't play. All right. I believe I know exactly where I was at. Oh, I can't believe it. Anyhow. Yeah, man. All right, I'm just going to, I believe it was 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, or 2 Timothy, chapter 3. <clears throat> okay, 7, I believe this is the page we're on 7. We've got a nice little rain cloud above us. Some blue skies and a lot, a whole lot of something else up in there. Anyhow. This know also, this is 2 Timothy chapter 3, that in the last days perilous times will come. Boy, are they ever, huh? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Uh, you guys, you know, when people say in future sins and everything, lovers of pleasure, okay? That's ungodly. We know in the scriptures it says that God doesn't change. He's the same from the beginning to the end of scriptures, okay? To the end. So, what has changed in the last 50 years in the churches? You know what I'm saying? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see. The church has changed. God doesn't change. All right. Jesus Christ coming here to do what he did. Um, God's still against sin. Okay. There's just no more sacrifice in an animal every time you do it. Um, we repent through Jesus Christ. That's what we do. Um, he made a way for us. We repent of our sins. And it says, if that seed takes root, you'll sin no more when that seed takes root. But, I mean, one only has to look around to see the evil in the world to see how bad it is today. Okay? Because obviously, uh, people, like it says here, lovers of pleasure more than uh, lovers of God. You know? Okay, you guys, Galatians chapter 6. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For who, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Okay, you can, you can count on it. For he that soweth to his flesh shall, shall of the flesh reap corruption. Okay, you can't produce good fruit, you guys, while you're sinning. We know this, right? Okay, that's the reason why a lot of people come against this channel. They'll try using one little verse. They'll go, read this. That's why they don't like him. Read this one verse. And I'm going to go, well, let me come back at you with the whole book. You know, actually, I can go into that same chapter where they got that one verse. And you just need to read it a little bit further. And it'll tell you exactly, you know, not sitting. You guys, that's why I said I've been talking to people in these churches today. And they don't know scriptures at all. Nothing. That's because they've been listening to one man in the pulpit telling them what they wanted to hear for a long time, for a whole long time. A lot of people left the churches because they got fed up of it, not liking what they were hearing. You guys, there's people that are sitting in those churches that love the Lord with everything in their heart. They do. They truly do. And they're not yielding themselves into sin all the time. Okay? But don't think the terrors aren't in there with you because they are. Okay. He that soweth to the flesh shall also uh, of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So you see, when you have lust of the flesh, that's your future sins, you guys. Don't make no mistake about it. Let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Don't let these guys deceive you with their whatever they're doing okay i just say whatever because to me it's all nonsense 
what they're doing. It's they're not even getting into scriptures. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. John ten ten. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Now let's dig into that word a little bit more. More abundantly. We know if we read scriptures, it says this life ain't but a vapor, just just a vapor. That's it. So all we need to do is stay steadfast in Christ because you know where that abundant life is? It's an eternal life, okay? But even in an eternal life, we stay straight on that path and living according to the way Christ told us to live and be content in what we have today, okay? Because, you know, these people that sought these things of this world, they're not going to enjoy it. It's going to soon come to an end, you know? It's going to be a rude awakening for them. Okay, strive to enter in at the straight gate, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able to. That's Luke 24, okay? Many, you guys, few people are going to escape this. Make no mistake about it. You know, Jesus said many are going to bang on that door saying, Lord, Lord, you know, let me in. They'll stand without outside knocking on the door saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. He'll answer and say unto them, I never knew you. Where'd you come from? Then shall you begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence. And thou hast taught in our streets. But he'll say, I tell you, I know not whence you are. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Huh. You guys, remember the serpent? He beguiled um, the woman, right? He deceived her to eat that fruit. Today, people are being led astray as past times. They still love to sin. They love the pleasures of the flesh. We see it's got to the point we are living in today. Pure evil. I mean, look at what they're teaching the children, you guys. You would think there was a time when the churches would have been in an uproar about this, man. I'm talking 50 years ago, they would have been in an uproar. They would have came out, man, no way would this stuff have flown. No way. The churches are asleep, you guys, and many are the terrors that are in it. Okay? They're in the pulpit. Okay? Because it's, it's the people that are in the pulpit that should be getting the congregation, whoever that ain't a terror in there, to get them to come out and speak against this evil. But they didn't. This is judgment on them. That's why it says if our gospel be hid, it's hid to those that are lost. Okay? Um, we don't have to fear, you guys. Like it says in Psalms 91, okay? the most He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth. Every word of God, you guys. Listen, like I said, you know, these little, these people that try to come against me on these channels, they come out with their little one-line verses, you know? I've had people in the beginning when I started this, what's your favorite verse? I said, the whole word of God. The whole word. I don't have my a favorite verse. I love the whole word from the very beginning to the very end. All of it. So what are they going to come at me with? Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth that noonday. A thousand shall fall to thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with your eye shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. 
Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion, <coughs> and the dragon shalt thou trample under foot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? You guys, we have a loving God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, man. You know, he look at what he did for us, you know. And to me, when I hear these people with their little future sinning, it's an insult. To me, it's an insult. It's a disgrace. Okay, it is. It's a disgrace. You know, it, it's lovers of this. Why do you think it says James 4, 4, love not the world, nor the things that are in it? And those that love it are the enemy of God. So these future sinners, who do you think they are? They're the enemy of God. You know, listen, if you sin, repent. I mean, repent. And if you can't repent, that means you probably lost your conscience. Your conscience is seared. And if that seed takes, you won't want to continue in sin. And if you're truly picking up your cross following Christ daily, there ain't no way you're going to sin. Matter of fact, you're going to come up out of this world and you're not going to want no part of it. You just, your spirit's going to be groaning to get out of this place because you see the evil and the filth that's in it every day. There's no way you're going to want to get involved with this. And you'll know those who are seeking the Lord Versus those that are of the world. I clearly see it today. Second Peter 3 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. He is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. That's second Peter, man. It's talking about repentance, okay? Like I said. All they can come at me with is a little one-line verse here and there. It's weak. They're wasting their time, you know, trying to come against me on this channel like it's going to stop me. Man, I got I got the whole word of God. I can come against anything that they throw at me. Anything. The whole word of God. You guys, a lot of people out there that don't know it. That's why we have to be a witness. We have to be that light so people can see it. When we were just over at a uh, uh, sister at Christ's house, Cynthia, we told Amanda, Mandy, you got to be the light, man. Be the light. And then Cynthia looked at her children and she goes, you need to be a light and you need to be a light. She goes, you guys need to be lights everywhere. Light up everything everywhere. Let everybody know who you are. John eight twelve, Then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12, on down. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I want to remind you guys, it's not going to be popular to be a Christian in these last days. And you're going to see more and more hatred. This is a spiritual battle, and you're going to start seeing it more materializing even more. And when he said, I'm going to bring a sword to separate you, you're going to be seeing it. I mean, it's going to be your husbands, your wives, your children, everybody and anybody, you know, your mother, your brother, your uncle, your sister, your aunt. I mean, the closer we get, and uh, this is going to see people that you never would have thought, they're going to denounce even the Lord. You know, it's because that it's getting more wicked and it's going to get more like it the closer we get. I don't think we got much longer, you guys. But trust in the Lord as you see these things. Don't be surprised. Just like the evil we see everywhere, these are the terrors. They're being gathered. Don't be shocked by it. That's all it is. It's just the terrors. It's who they are. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. But he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. For a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. 
Matthew 7, 21, 23. I hope this one loads up, you guys. I don't understand why it the video wouldn't play. It just went into like a minute and 30 seconds and it said can't play video. I tried it a couple of times, stopped. Must have been something in there they didn't want, I don't know. Matthew 7, 21, 23. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So you see, you guys, there's more to scriptures than these people with their roll of one-line verses. This is Jesus saying this. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And cast out devils in thy name and done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Okay. Acts 17, 30, 31. And the times of this ignorance, you guys, God winks at it. I seen this in 2014 where I seen it was big and huge. And then I seen him from the ceiling to a store aisle when he leaned back and he looked at me and he winked at me. And I wasn't sure what the heck it was that I just seen. But when I read this verse, you see, you guys, I didn't have a Bible at this time. I didn't understand these things that I was seeing. Okay. I did not understand why I was seeing it. But this is when I had people trying to offer me money, high paying jobs. If I would speak less about Jesus Christ, I told them that would never happen. Well, my phone quit ringing. And I got put out of business. And that's when I started seeing these things. And I started having dreams and visions. That's when I got that picture of the angel blowing the trumpet above my head that I took in 77. You know, everything's happening according to God's plan. Everything. You know, everything. All right. At the time of that ignorance, God winked at it. But now he commanded all men everywhere to repent. Because he has pointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. You guys, look, just keep looking at the evil around you and see why they find time to come against this channel. When I'm saying we got to resist the devil, don't sin. Okay, then they want to come in here and say, well, we're by the blood, by grace, we can, you know. They want to throw one little verse at you or something. Boy, it's weak what they're throwing at us, ain't it? You know how they overcame? When they took prayer and everything out of school, who do you think those children are from back then that are in the pulpits today? It's weak. It's real weak because they didn't know anything. They, they came right in, love of the world, lust of the flesh. You know, many of them came in hard, cold from the world, you know, and they made a uh, made a business out of it, made a business out of it. This guys, the scriptures are written. All we have to know is that God doesn't change. He never changes. And the word of God is truth. All right. He doesn't change ever. Not from the beginning, not to the end. But the churches sure have, haven't they? Now, Ezekiel 33, 6. If the watchman sees the sword come and he blows not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So you see, you guys, this is why I am the way that I am. You know, I don't, I don't play with this. I ain't got time to. I ain't going to. And they know it. They ain't got nothing I want here. Nothing. Other than I want my brothers and sisters to come that are meant to come. Whose name has been written in the book since the beginning. Okay. All right, you guys, God bless you all. I love you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Carol. 759 Sector C. Carol! We gotta go! We gotta get out of here! We gotta go right now! Listen to me, Steve. No, you don't understand! We gotta go! Go.
Where? No, we gotta go. What the hell are you talking about? Steve, this is important. Go where? That's right. Go where? What happened in your room? Are you listening? What happened in your room is not an isolated incident. It is something that is happening everywhere, everyone. So, where are you going to go? Where are you going to run? Where are you going to hide? Nowhere. Because there's no one like you. Ready for Jesus, brother. He's coming. The church.